welcome to the Moonshots Podcast. It's episode 205. I'm your co-host, Mike Parsons, and as always, I'm joined by Mark Pearson Freeland. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Mike. Uh, it brings me some joy as well as a little bit of sadness as we come to the end of our Achieving Your Goals series today. It may be the end, but we are going to close with a bang, Mark. Who are we studying today? Today, Mike, I think is the perfect culmination of our Achieving Your Goals series with Darren Hardy's The Compound Effect. Jumpstart your income, your life, your success. Mike, I mean, this is a great end to our Achieving Your Goals because it's all about strategies that help you go out and achieve a goal. You can triumph over your uh, competitors as well as perhaps yourself because of setting into effect habits. I mean, this is kind of the moonshot's message here, isn't it? We are just slightly into this, so we should apologize to our listeners if they feel like, <laughs> geez, Mike and Mark are very excited about this uh, <laughs> this book. But it really is, you, you, you're really right, like the, the ability to translate your goals into habits is perhaps one of the things that decides who wins and who loses in life. Mm. Uh, because it's, you know, Many people entertain dreams, fantasies, and uh, visions of grandeur, but it's really the habits that you stick to and your capacity to stick to them is what creates the compound effect. And you might be familiar with the compound effect from you know putting money in the, uh, a savings account back in the day when you actually used to get interest on your savings. Mm-hmm. But uh, every year... You put a couple of dollars uh, into the bank account. It earns interest. But the following year, because you've got interest on top of your principal, you then earn interest on the two of those combined. And that's how you kind of get one plus one equals three. And that is exactly the same thing with habits in your life to achieve your goals. And Darren Hardy has a big promise, doesn't he? I mean, he's like, it jumpstart your income, your life, your success. Uh, the question is, Mark, is he overpromising in that subheading? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, Mike, I don't think he is. <laughs> I believe, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make the case here that the work that Darren has put into creating and communicating this insight around compound effect really, as we'll dig into in today's show, speaks to a lot of the work that we've already uncovered within habits, you know, James Clear with Atomic Habits and so on. Each of us can take ownership over the things that we do each day. And when you do, no matter where you are, no matter what you want to achieve or what you've already uh, completed in the past, by taking action today, you can go out and perhaps get closer to your income goal, your life goal, your success goal by just beginning today and doing that 1% better each day. So I, I would make the case here, Mike, that he isn't overpromising because at the end of the day, it's up to us to put it into action. And this is super important because in a world that feels like it's in hyperspeed and everything happens at the click of a button, everything is instant. Mm. There is no delay gratification on Netflix, on YouTube, on Facebook, on TikTok. But the reality is that success is the long game and Mm. you need to let your efforts compound. You need to have the right habits. And we are going to discover what it really takes. The idea of an overnight success is one of the greatest falsehoods to ever exist. And we're going to see how you can get to success, but how you need to let it compound. So Mark, Mm. let's tear at it. Let's rip it up. Let's get compounding. Where do you want to start? Well, I want to start by opening up into Darren Hardy himself, who's going to speak a little bit about this idea of gratification and why we all need to put in the work. Today, more than ever, we are constantly bombarded with ever increasingly sensational claims to get rich, get fit, get younger, get sexier all overnight for only three easy payments of $39.95. These repetitive marketing messages are distorting our sense of reality and what it really takes to succeed. It's time to clear the air. You do want to be more successful, right? You do want to be healthier, have more meaningful relationships, earn more money, make a bigger contribution to the world. But what do you do? Who do you follow? Who do you believe? What plan do you invest in? With so many mixed messages, it could be perplexing, I know. 
As publisher of Success Magazine, I've heard it all. I've seen it all. I've tried most of it. All day, every day, I am sorting through this entire body of knowledge called personal development. Each week, I get a chance to sit down with the top thought leaders of our day and the extraordinary achievers of our time to discover what really works to help you be more successful. The Compound Effect reveals the core essentials responsible for the success of every super achiever you will ever read about. This book is a distillation of the core fundamentals responsible for extraordinary and lasting success. This is the bottom line. Success is not doing 5,000 things really well. Success is doing about a half a dozen things really well 5,000 times. The key is this. What are the half dozen things? How do you do them really well? That is what this book details. Inside the book, you will also find strategies on how to win every time. This is the number one strategy to achieve any goal and triumph over any competitor, even if they are smarter, more experienced, or more talented than you are. Also, we'll talk about what stops people from making progress on their goals. There are some landmines that people are mostly unaware of, but undermine their success. How to painlessly, easier than you think, install the new disciplines needed for world-class performance and results. On top of that, finally, how to get yourself to do the things you don't feel like doing. The real key to motivation, getting it and keeping it. I'll give you the simple formula for improving yourself and your results a thousand percent over the next 10 years. I'll also show you how to capture the elusive but awesome force of momentum. Catch it and you'll be unstoppable. And one of my favorite chapters, The Acceleration Secrets of Today's Super Achievers. Do they have an unfair advantage? You bet they do. Now you can too. The Compound Effect brings you the best success practices and disciplines collected from the best in the world. Made simple and actionable, regardless of your current level of success. I promise you this, inside this book is one profound idea that will make a major difference to your life. Mark, if you thought for just a moment that we were excited, I'm listening to that and I think Darren Hardy's pretty excited about the compound effect. How much coffee did that guy drink? Um, look, Mark, here's the thing. Um, I think he touched upon... One of the key things here, which is not getting distracted doing 5,000 things occasionally, mm. but doing one thing 5,000 times. And, you know, it's all about the choices of what we're going to translate from our dreams and ambitions into daily practice. And building that bridge, it's not necessarily easy. We can find ourselves distracted. I personally find that, you know, I have this great temptation for the um, brute force, like just I'm going to work harder than anybody else. I'm just going to throw myself at it. Um, and invariably that leads me to doing too much, too many things across, and, and spread too thin. This mm. is all about putting in those uh, daily efforts. And I think the other thing that he touched upon there, which is really important, there's going to be times where we're a bit tired and we don't feel like doing it. And I think that's another thing that I experience. When you wake up and you're like, oh gosh, and you're confronted with the the choice, do I hit snooze or not? Yeah. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I, I think you've you've certainly made the case. If if Darren Hardy hasn't convinced us that the compound effect is worth considering and sitting in our achieving your goal series, I think you've made the case right there, Mike. <laughs> For me, where Darren Hardy is really bringing this to life is communicating that when you want to or should work hard, you need direction. You need to know where you're going. You need to maintain that momentum. And this is a big idea that we're going to run into a, a couple of times on today's show, isn't it? This idea of getting things moving, but importantly, in the right direction. And I think this compounds, if, uh, if you pardon the pun, compounds nicely with the work that we've already learned from people like John Doerr, Christina Woodkey, Michael D. Watkins, and Kim Scott. When you can combine the lessons from the compound effect, this idea of maintaining the course and staying diligent and resilient, no matter what comes our way. And, you know, let's say 1% every single day, you can go out and maintain or achieve those goals that you've got in mind. It's the North Star. And, and, you know, there's some sort of magnetism when you've got your goals, when you've got your daily habits worked out. I think you 
get this momentum. It's like this mm. magnetism. You are drawn to it. And there's all sorts of other good things you can do around mindset belief and manifestation to really make these things happen, but just the capacity to turn up. I mean, you got to make David Goggins proud uh, that you turned up, that you were like getting uncommon, uh, that you were comfortable with the discomfort. And I'll tell you, people who are experiencing some lunar powered magnetism are our members, Mike. Yep. If Goggins is proud, he would be proud of all of our members who are supporting the Moonshots podcast. So please welcome all of our members and supporters of the Moonshot show. Bob, John, Terry and Ken, Dietmar, Marjan, Connor and Rodrigo, Yasmin, Lisa, Sid and Mr. Bonjour, Paul, Burke, Kalman and David, Joe, Crystal, Ivo and Christian, Hurricane Brain, Samuela, Kelly, Barbara and Andre, Matthew, Eric, Abby and Hosey, Joshua, Chris, Deborah and Lasse, Steve, Craig, Lauren, Javier, Daniel, Andrew and Ravi, Yvette, Karen, Raul, PJ, Nikuara, Ola and Ingram. Welcome and thank you for supporting the Moonshots podcast. And we should, uh, we should call out Marjan Modara, who, um, in a few days, we'll have her first one-year anniversary Amazing. of the Moonshots podcast. So um, thank you, Marjan, for your support. I hope you're enjoying the show. I hope you're as excited as Darren Hardy seems to be <laughs> about the compound effect. And two guys, Mark and Mike, are pretty excited <laughs> too. Now, let's kind of turn our brains now and uh, really focus upon what this whole compound effect truly and really is. Let's break it down moonshot style. So let's have a listen to one of our favorite YouTube channels, Productivity Game, breaking down the compound effect. To understand what the compound effect is, let's play out a little scenario. Now pretend someone offered you the following. Put in 30 minutes a day, the same time every day, to push your skills and show improvement. At the end of the first week, you'll get $10 with a 10% raise at the end of each week if you consistently put in the time day after day. Or you were offered $5,000 to put in the same amount of time, but you don't need to do it on a consistent basis and you don't need to improve your skills. You can just use your existing skill set. Now, which would you take? Let's say you took the first option and your friend takes the second. You start putting in a small amount of consistent work each day. After an entire month of daily effort, you've made $51.01. Meanwhile, your friend is just cashed in a check for $5,000. After the second month, your friend is rubbing it in your face. He's just made $10,000, not needing to push himself. And here you are working day after day for a petty $125.81 up to this point. Your family starts suggesting that you should take the other offer as it's still on the table. But you don't get discouraged. You believe in what you're doing and you know the hard work will pay off one day. After the third month, people are getting downright angry with you. You've only made $235.24. They think you've made a stupid decision and beg you to just take the other offer. But you ignore them and keep proceeding. A year goes by. You only have $15,541 to your friend's $60,000. He's living a comfortable life and doesn't really have a care in the world. Meanwhile, people are openly ridiculing you for giving up such a great opportunity to make easy money. Only after 16 months have you made the same amount of money as your friend. Your friends and family only have one thing to say. It's about damn time. After 16 months of putting in the work day after day and receiving a 10% increase at the end of each week, only now are you starting to see significant results. The next month, you make $40,000 in one month. The month after that, you make $59,000. At the end of that second year, you have accumulated just over $2.2 million, an average of $1.1 million per year to your friend's $60,000 a year. Your family and friends are dumbfounded. Your friend can't help but think he's missed out on something significant. Sure, he's comfortable with 60 grand a year, but he's filled with regret. What this story illustrates is that small, unsexy, but smart decisions made consistently every day that are in alignment with your big vision lead to seemingly incomprehensible and incredible results. Results that you can be truly proud of one day. Mike, what we're hearing from Productivity Game there is a great little story, regardless of the specifics of dollars and, and cents and so on. I think what I'm you know, taking away from that and where I'm getting a little bit inspired is this idea of the compound effect being 
something that you have to put in the time to do. It isn't an overnight success like we heard with Darren Hardy in the first clip. It's not get a six pack uh, within six days. It's not get rich quick schemes or anything like that. Instead, it is a gain that you can create and you can put into practice over time. And I think at the, in the short term, you might be looking at the, uh, the effects, the interests, if you will, and, and wondering whether it's worth continuing on this course, you know, oh, mm. my, my friend, he's got the, the 10 grand versus where I am, but actually the effect in the long run is far greater. And I think this is the big distinction for me. It's the short-term thinking. What's my immediate gratification? What's my, the money in my pocket? What's the effect that when I wake up in the morning versus where am I working towards? What are my goals that I'm trying to put into place with regards to my work, my personal life? Where am I trying to get to? And if I really want to go out and achieve that, putting in the practice, putting in the hard work is something that that can be celebrated. You know, it, it can be really, really enjoyable, can't it? Well, absolutely. Uh, I would propose to you that if you can get yourself there, that you can experience the well-being almost like achieving your goal, which is a long-term thing, through knowing that today you did the work. And here's mm. what I mean. Like if you can really make the connection between the thing I'm doing today and my long-term objective. So if I think about my well-being, one of the key things I need to do every morning is to stretch, basically mm. a mini yoga session. And I did it this morning. And I've done it every morning for quite some time now. If you can just have a little bit of awareness when you're about to do those stretches, or maybe it's your journaling, and you can go, you know what? I'm just going to celebrate that I am doing this this morning because I know how much this means to me. I know how this is going to contribute to my mental clarity, my sense of well-being, my fitness, whatever it's contributing to. In a funny way, you can close the gap between, you know, uh, the gratification in the short and long term when you celebrate the rituals that, oh, by the way, they're going to get you to those big objectives. Yeah. And I think that's really important. However, the reality is we all face those moments where it's like, oh my gosh, how much longer do I have to do this before <laughs> I get to the objective? And I think that's where we kind of face our true self. Like, even though you know you're doing the right thing, but you're like tired, mm -hmm. you're fed up, you're not seeing the gains in whatever respect, be it mentally, physically, at work, at home. Staying the course, being absolutely Goggins like, and just pushing through. I think that's kind of where we we really decide our fate, don't you? Yeah, I, and I I, I want to build on this idea of celebrating those small um, repetitions. I, th I think you're totally right. When I accomplish the small behaviors, the small actions that I uh, I, I strive to achieve each day. When I do do them, whether it's journaling, stretching, um, getting a bit of exercise, or just as we've discussed in the show, preparing myself for tomorrow, it, I, I need to, or I, I try to at least celebrate each of the small little moments because it is something that does matter in the long run, doesn't it? And if you can celebrate them, then it doesn't feel quite so difficult. <laughs> well, um, let's be like super selfish about it. I put in my to-do list every day to do my stretches. So you know what? I get to hit that button and say done. And there's nothing like crossing off something like on a to-do list. So that's, well, you know, that's my little indulgence. So Mark, what I even do, I even have things in my to-do list, which are daily habits that lead to my goals. So I want a happy, connected, loving family. So you know what I do? I have as a daily task to spend quality time with my son and wife because I know those will contribute to my and my family's well-being. And if I have been too busy and haven't had a chance to spend quality time with them, 
this is really like a moment of truth in my to-do list because I have to say, I didn't get that done today. And that helps me. Uh, for example, I will be away traveling tonight. So I made a point of this morning of chatting with my son before he went to school. I'll make a big effort over the weekend when I'm back because it's a goal of mine and I'm going to be missing some of this quality time. I'm investing before and after in order to make sure that I hit my objective. Now this, at a certain point, our listeners are going, this my guy is just bananas. But this is what I do to make myself accountable to the goals that I have. I've, if I don't have those daily tasks, such as journaling, it's a daily task and it feels so good to tick it off. It also keeps you accountable. Whatever you can do to make the daily habit feel awesome, then there's less of this feeling of lack of uh, gratification or deferring gratification. You can just love the process, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. You, if you can learn to love the process and you can see the benefit over time, whether it's hanging out with your, with your family, investing time there, whether it's working on the uh, success that you have at work through implementing goals and strategies, as well as OKRs, you can start to see that, that compound effect over time. And I, th- I think the key word that you've just called out, this idea of accountability and ownership is so important. I think a lot of us go through life and feel like things are out of our hands in terms of success or promotions or anything that is a bit of a stress mm. from a day-to-day perspective. But I think the truth, and you're, you're calling it out, and it's reminding me of um, William H. McRaven, mm. you know, in your bed in the morning. There are certain elements, certain pieces, certain actions and behaviors that you can own day-to-day that then you feel in control of. So whether it's spending a time with your family or whether it's making the bed (laughs) or taking your dog for a walk, those things are yours. You can control it. And I think we can all get a lot of motivation from just taking control of those small pieces of our days because it ultimately has that compound effect of feeling comfortable, confident, uh, uh, positive, I suppose, in that day-to-day life. I think the, um, you know, the best way I can make an analogy to what we're learning here about this compound effect is what we did in the Michael Jordan show. He Mm. turned up to training first, last to leave, played the hardest, and he did that continually. And that's how he became the greatest ever of all time. If you want to realize your goals in life, translate them into these daily habits. And you don't have to worry about the goals so much because if, if I want to have a great vibe in the family, like that's a big kind of goal and how do you do it? I just got to turn up every day and make sure I spend time where I sit down and give my son attention, conversation, interest whether we're playing football out the back of the house or whether we're chatting about the UFC, it doesn't really matter. The fact is that I know I've got to go in and spend that time and it's helpful for me Mm. to spend that time. But if I just focus on that quality time, just like every day I stretch, every day I walk or I run, every day I make sure that I do the things that contribute to my health and well-being, then I don't have to worry about you know, being chronically unhealthy in my old age. This means you can sort of like just be immersed in your day, in the moment, because you know what you're doing is right. I mean, this is super powerful, but this whole frame of thinking, it's a little bit different to how a lot of our lives work these days, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, it can be very challenging to put up with the, um, constant changing of directions, of priorities, of inputs, whether they're coming from our work or our personal lives. So this next clip we've got, we're going to hear again from Productivity Game. He's going to talk about this idea of staying true to the compound curve, the compound effect from Darren Hardy, as well as the idea of our microwave mentality. The small changes you make every day offer no immediate result, no big win, and no obvious I told you so payoff. So why bother? It's hard not to think this way when we live in a culture that promotes what Darren calls a microwave mentality. We expect instant downloads, fast food, and same-day shipping. 
To stay true to the compound curve, we need to trade the need for immediate results for immediate alignment with our core values. Darren says your core values are your internal compass, your guiding beacon, your personal GPS. They act as the filter through which you run all life's demands, requests, and temptations, making sure they're leading you towards your intended destination. Getting your core values defined and properly calibrated is one of the most important steps in redirecting your life towards your grandest vision. When you know that what you're doing from moment to moment, that the choices and decisions that you're making from moment to moment are in alignment with your core values, you stop needing to have instant results show up in your life. You are content in knowing that you are becoming the person that you want to become. To discover your core values within your work setting, complete the following exercise. Think of someone successful within your field or the field you want to work in that you respect. Then ask yourself what key attributes most contribute to their success. When I do this exercise, I think of people that are curious, love learning, and push themselves to produce great things in the world. Therefore, my core values in work are learning and creating things that challenge the status quo. Now it's my duty to know if my actions are in alignment with my core values. So I need to monitor every single choice that I make while working. Darren says that most of us are sleepwalking through our daily choices. Half the time, we're not even aware that we're making them. To make sure that I am aware of my choices, during my work hours, I've started writing down every work-related decision that I make. At the top of each hour, I write down what I focused on the last hour. Then at the top of the page, I write down my core value, learning and creating. I then objectively cross out every decision that I made that doesn't align with my core values. This exercise has sharpened my focus. I've started to notice things that aren't in alignment with my core values almost immediately. Knowing that I am making small decisions that are moving me towards the person I want to become is enough to quiet my monkey mind from wanting to see instant results. The act of aligning each work decision with my core value provides me with the reassurance and motivation to stick with my daily pursuit of achieving a compounded, incredible result in my life. Sometimes knowing that we're making good choices isn't enough. To know that we are on the right path, the compound path, we need to focus and measure the percent gains, not the net gains. Oh, we are opening up a whole new trajectory on core values here. So mm. these are sort of the how you achieve your plan, how you achieve your objective. Um, Mark, I think we should play a little game here. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. I reckon we should uh, throw at each other just some of our core values that you and I have um, things that you will check in, beliefs, values, and principles that you might check in on to how you're living your life, how you're being the best version mm -hmm. of yourself. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll lead with a couple, um, warm it up a bit, and then you can hit me with some of yours. So yep. I think one of my first ones is to make sleep my priority number one. Mm -hmm. That is huge for me. Uh, here's another one. Uh, be still for there is much to hear. This one's really important Ooh. for me because I'm a bit of a chatterbox and sometimes I'm <laughs> too energized and uh, I need you to just slow the hell down and just listen. <laughs> In fact, be still. Yep. Like stillness is the key if you listen to Ryan Holiday. So that's a couple of principles for me. What, what, what's top of mind for you about principles of how you want to be in this world? Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. I, I, I like those. For me, you're right. Sleep is, is spot on. I try to also, uh, I think in sp being inspired by moonshots, I try to make sure I learn something new each day. Mm. So that helps me therefore deliver on the idea of being open-minded to other people. Yes. Um, so, uh, from a behavior perspective, I try and be you know, uh, relatively nice. And what I mean by that is not let the distractions or the stresses of work impact how I might interact with, you know, neighbors or friends or uh, my family. I'll try and do my best at maintaining not so much a division, but more of an appreciation that these other, uh, that other people aren't necessarily the cause of, uh, you know, feeling stressed or mm. anxious or pressured from work. So trying to, you know, be proactive in reflecting on what I've got going on and where it is focused. No, okay. and not, 
yeah, do you know what I mean? So not, it's not impacting uh, areas that are not necessarily uh, directly impacted from that work. Um, I'd build on the, the sleep by also adding an exercise, oh, yeah. uh, something outdoors, ideally mm-hmm. with, with fresh air, maybe a bit of sunshine or maybe rain if you're based in Australia. Uh, <laughs> well, if you've got El Nino, <laughs> you, El Nino usually exactly. it's a bit scarce on, on, the, on the, yeah. that front. And That's do you right. ask your, do you try and ask yourself, have I done these things today? Have you held yourself accountable to these things? How does that work for you? Yes. Yes. So for me, it will often be in the reflection that I'll do when journaling. Mm. So when I'm sitting down, whether it's, uh, I, I tend to journal in the morning, so I'll yep. reflect perhaps Same. on the, the day after uh, the, the day previous, mm. um, as well as want to, what I want to try and achieve in that day. The, the coming day. And that's where I'll, I'll probably hold myself accountable. So thinking this is my intention. This is what I want to try and do, whether it's behavior or actions or habits that I want to try and achieve that will then hopefully set me up for success for the rest of the day. Mm. Mm. I, uh, I definitely use the journaling thing and, um, I try and hold myself accountable to them, but I also, I really do try in the moment to celebrate them when I'm doing them. Mm. Uh, I've got some other crazy ones like um, (laughs) observe without judging, go slow to go fast, Mm -hmm. go high when they go low. Oh, you're pulling out all of the mantras from Moonshots now. I totally stole that from Michelle Obama, (laughs) from Brett, but I like it. Uh, (laughs) Embrace the discomfort, very Moonshotty. This one's really good, like cost you nothing, huge benefit, smile and breathe. Like when in doubt, mm. just smile. Mm. So when mm. I'm driving the car, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just have this thing. I should smile. Like why not? Yeah. <laughs> why totally not? similar yep. to you. Be curious and open to the new. Mm-hmm. Um, get outside and move. Oh, mm-hmm. this one's a good one. Do not dwell on the past or worry about the future. Yeah, that's a good one. It's pr- sometimes I was going to say it was pretty hard, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but but I believe that and 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 as we're we're learning in today's show with with Darren Hardy as well as the insights and the breakdowns from Productivity Game, is over time they it does get easier. Does. You know it, the challenge is when you are trying to you know not let. Um, external factors influence how you feel, how you are producing work, how you are creating or delivering um, key items in in your day-to-day life. It does become easier over time when you put in the practice of, let's say it's reflection. Let's say, as as we've discussed in the show before, when, if you want to start journaling, it's just one word a day, 1%. Just do a little bit today because eventually after a while, you might either A, learn the best way that you like to reflect or you like to work with other people or you you want to try and be productive or you just get into a bit of a habit, Mm. a bit of a routine and Mm. it becomes a lot easier to then go out and let's say it's journal or go for exercise, whatever it is. It really does have a long-term tail, if you will, uh, and which becomes much, much easier over time, doesn't it? It does. And I think like this is where, you know, you can just have this um, (laughs) bias towards action, right? Like just get it going, start moving, um, start um, letting the compound happen um, and don't be a victim of fear, doubt, fear of failure wondering Mm. what others might say, get outside, start doing things that contribute to a compounding effect. Start doing things that are in alignment with your values, with your objectives. And even though you will not have, you know, ascended to the top of the mountain, you can enjoy the climb because you'll know you're Mm. going towards the peak of the mountain and you're not languishing down in the valley of darkness. Another place you can go in this world, if you want to ascend to the highest peak, is to moonshots.io. That's where you can become a member and support us, for which we would be very grateful. That's where you can get the show notes to this show 
And and Mark, if if journeying all the way to moonshots.io is not enough, it, you need some other challenge. You need some way to contribute to the sharing of our message. What else could our listeners and members do if they want to contribute to Moonshots? Well, assuming that our listeners and members aren't sitting in the room that you and I record our podcast in, and instead they're listening to us through their devices, whether it's browser or mobile, it's likely that our listeners are consuming us through maybe Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or another podcasting app of choice. What you can do, listeners as well as subscribers, is leave us a rating or a review. Those Ratings and reviews really do make an enormous difference for us because it enables our show to get out into the ears as well as the hands of listeners from around the globe. And each of those reviews, each of those ratings, we get to see and we can call out and celebrate. And they really do make a difference, not just for Mike and I and the Moonshots family, but also for listeners around the globe. So please, if you want to go a little bit deeper, listen to our show notes, check out the sources of the clips, as well as our recommended reading lists. You pop over to moonshots.io or in fact, open up your podcasting app of choice and leave us a rating or a review. Well said, Mark. And as we ascend the mountain, as we begin to allow the compounding to happen, the continuous repeating of daily habits, maybe it's only five or six things, but they really do make a difference. We start to experience momentum. And one of our favorite YouTubers, Brian Johnson, has got some thoughts on this compound effect and then the role of momentum. So Darren has some great stories about Mr. Mo, momentum, and what happens when you consistently apply these daily disciplines and experience the compound effect is that you have this momentum that comes into your life. And all great performers are very good friends with Mr. Mo, Darren tells us. And he likens it to the space shuttle. The space shuttle, you may know, uses more fuel in the first few minutes of the trip than it does the entire rest of the trip. It's amazing. Why is that? Because it needs to escape gravitational pull. Well, so do we. When we're creating new habits, when we're committed to creating a better life, it's the, it's the rocket launch phase of a space shuttle mission. It takes a ton of energy. It's hard work. To, to rewire our brains and to actually create new habits, right? But then what happens? Then Mr. Mo comes on and all of a sudden, when the space shuttle's out there past gravitational pull, it just needs to make a subtle change, not a lot of energy and it gets dramatic results, right? Mr. Mo comes. So you wanna stay with it long enough to get Mr. Mo and then stay with it long enough to keep Mr. Mo in town. Mike, I really, really like this analogy, this visualization. <laughs> Because there are many, many times in my career, as well as my personal life, when things get hard and I question whether I'm, you know, whether I'm motivated enough to stay the Mm. course, whether I can, you know, be bothered to keep on pushing that grindstone, you know, that feeling of trying to carry a heavy weight up a hill, like any habit when you're starting out, whether it's journaling or exercising or whatever it is it becomes, there comes a moment when you think, can I be bothered? And I love this analogy of the rocket ship breaking through the atmosphere, requiring all of that energy (laughs) in exchange for the ease that comes afterwards. This value exchange is Mm. is so vivid in my, in my visualization as as I hear that clip, when you put in the work and get that momentum, Right at the beginning, it becomes, it's like a, like climbing a hill or sprinting up a hill. And the <laughs> truth is that does eventually even out, doesn't it? And then suddenly that hard work that you've, you've done, maybe it's stretching, maybe it's training that muscle, maybe it's growing the muscle. It then becomes that little bit easier to then repeat or can, can uh, remain consistent going forward. What, what do you think? I, I'm wondering how... How do you try and engineer this momentum Mm. of all these good things, laddering up, feeling like you're on track? How do you do it? Like, are there some, is it getting up early? Is it organizing yourself? Like, how do you make it happen? How do you increase the odds of momentum? I I think as we've already discussed, we've spoken, I think already about the idea of reflection. So looking at where you are 
um, planning your day ahead or perhaps reflecting on the day previous. So I'll, I'll try and do it a different build. I think for me, where I can observe myself benefiting from repeatable habits is, is something like waking up early. So even though at the beginning, whether it's, uh, let, in fact, let, let me, let me, let me break it down a little bit, Mike. I have over the past, let's say six months made it one of my habits to get up and, uh, go for a swim in the open ocean a few times a week. So on average, it's probably maybe uh, two to three times. Said differently, you're crazy, but yeah, please continue. <laughs> it's said differently, a little bit crazy. And what I have observed, particularly at the beginning of doing this, my mind would say, oh, Mark, I mean, do you really want to get up at 5.15? I mean, it looks a bit cold out there. I think it might be raining. What about your shoes getting wet? Oh, you know, your stuff's going to get, get, it's going to be cold in there. There's all these little internal voices trying mm. to put me off. But now I find that I will wake up on, on the days that I'm planning to go for a little bit of a swim. I'll wake up naturally, perhaps at an ungodly hour, but I'll still wake up regardless. And there's no question in my mind whether I'm going to go up and do it or not. It's instant. Okay, I'm going to go. Let's, let's get things in shape. And I think the experience of creating a compound habit and putting that into practice each day has actually been very, very enjoyable. It isn't something that has become a pain. In fact, it's something that I, I celebrate, you know, it's something that I'm, I'm quite pleased with doing. And I think this momentum being the key to success is because it's repeated it's repeatable. It's something you put into practice each day. And fundamentally, when it comes to how to put it in practice, I think it's just to do the hard work. It's being inspired by the individuals that we, we uncover on moonshots. It's taking lessons from the, the successful individuals that we dive into, as well as just knowing that other people are doing it as well. There are people out there, there's so many of us who are trying to be that best version of ourselves that I think, okay, well, if they can do it, so can I. Does that make sense? It does. And I think um, that's why we go and celebrate all of these amazing superstars and authors and experts who put in the work and get the results. That's why we love the Goggins. That's why we love Albert Einstein. Both of them had the fundamentally same approach. They worked hard every day. They put in the work and it compounded like crazy. Michael mm. Jordan, Oprah, Walt Disney, the list goes on. They met, I think they best friended Mr. Mo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think they really did. And, and for me, look, the job that I try to do is if I want – uh, to perform well in my work, pursuing my dreams for work with the show, with my clients, with the companies that I advise, then I know that I can lay a foundation uh, similar to yourself, good sleep, good diet, good exercise, good mindfulness. Those are all things that are like big rock solid foundations on which I can wake up and bring my best self mm. to the work at hand. I can think clearly. I can take decisive choices. I can support mental coach, help people get the job done. This to me is like the way I think about what I can do to improve the chance of having great momentum or flow state is do those things, sleep well, mm. eat well, exercise. Those are all of the things that lay the foundation. And I think that uh, the challenge that we all face is sometimes uh, we, we get a little bit off track, right? Mm. And, uh, you know, sometimes we face hardship and it doesn't just knock you off the bike. The worst thing is you don't get back on. And that's, that's the battle of life. And I think we have to kind of accept that we're always kind of in that battle with life. It ain't perfect, is it, Mark? Well, I mean, it's, it's uh, to, to go a little bit, uh, tangential, it's kind of like gravity, you know, there, there's always something that's pulling you 
back. There's always something that's grounding you. And I think similar to the rocket analogy that we heard, you need to break through it. The status quo, or as we heard in the earlier clip, uh, the microwave mentality and the idea of sleepwalking through your choices. Mm. It's very, very easy because it's the path of least resistance, isn't it? It's very easy to just allow life to pass you by or perhaps worse, allow life to dictate to you what you do and don't do. So I think the big lesson that I've learned from, you know, uh, digging into, you know, 205 shows Mm. is the idea that you, you can take ownership over how you interact with, you know, other people, how you interact with your own mind, that monkey mind, as we were hearing in the clip earlier, Mm. you can, can take control of it. And I think this compound um, affect these, these small habits that you can put into practice is just a demonstration of taking, as they say, the bull by the horns or taking that little bit of control and not sleepwalking through choices, making sure that you keep momentum as well as go out and, you know, stay true to the goals that, you know, John Doerr and Christina Woodkey and Kim Scott have, have inspired us to go out and do. I mean, how good is that? That is just what we're all about. Like I think about what we're hoping for all of our listeners is that they can get some momentum from listening to the show. They can build the habits. They can set the goals. They can think differently. They can be great leaders, great communicators. They can build great businesses, great products and services. Mm. And I think it would only be appropriate to let Darren Hardy bring us home, Mark. So where are we going to go now? We're going to hear one more time in show 205 on the compound effect from Darren Hardy, who's going to tell us the strategy that can get you and I and all of our listeners beyond the pack. And it's simply by avoiding the comfort zone. But there is one strategy that can accelerate your success. Okay. That can get you far beyond the pack to have you break out from the Peloton, so to speak. And here's what it is. I learned it when I first got into real estate. I went to a seminar. It's kind of a theme there. And I was the only guy that asked the lecturer to lunch. And so we went to lunch and I sat down with him. And I'm only 20 years of age right now, okay? And I'm in the real estate business and just getting started. And I said, tell me what I got to do to be successful. I said, I'm willing to do anything. He says, are you really, really willing to do anything? I said, I'm willing to do anything. He says, then I'm going to give you the ultimate key to your success. I'm like, I'm ready. He said, go fail. I said, what do, you, what do you mean go fail? He said, yeah, go fail fast, go fail a lot, and go fail really big. And I thought, man, isn't the whole idea of success avoiding failure? And he said, no, 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 it's quite the opposite. The key to your success is your failure. And then he gave me this quote from Thomas Watson, who used to be the president of IBM, where he said, your key to success is massive failure. Now, don't just hear that as some motivational line. Let that marinate on your brain a little bit. The key to success is massive failure. What if that's true? Now, based on the look on your faces, same look I had on my face, okay? So he explained this to me a little bit. He took a cocktail napkin and he drew out this analogy. He said, look, On one side of the pendulum is joy, love, happiness, and success. The other side is pain, rejection, sadness, and failure. He says, look, if if you just stand still, you won't experience any pain, rejection, sadness, and defeat, but you won't experience any joy, love, happiness, and success either. He says, you you know, you can't live under a bridge. Eventually, you got to go and mix amongst people. So what ends up happening is, is, People are only willing to experience so much rejection and so much pain and so much defeat. And so they only experience so much joy, so much love. And they end up just operating in what is called this comfort zone. And if anything is outside that comfort zone, they're like, oh, no, no. And they just stay right here in this comfort zone. But they complain, why don't I have more success? Why don't I have more love? Why don't I have more happiness in my life? He said, so you can't push the pendulum on the side of success. He must have went to a Jim Rohn seminar. What you pursue will elude you. He said the only side of the pendulum you can control is the side of pain, rejection, sadness, and defeat. So your job is to go push the pendulum as high 
as wide and as fast as you can on the side of pain, rejection, sadness, and the defeat. He says, I promise you, it'll swing in equal proportion on the other side. So I just took his word for it. So I just pursued it with reckless abandon. Mark, is he, is he going for like step into the arena kind of Brené Brown? Is that where he's going with this? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a great connection, actually. I think you're totally right. You can't succeed unless you give it a go, unless you get in that arena. Risk yourself. Risk, right, and fail, right? Yeah, it, it's a similar message to Elizabeth Gilbert with Big Magic, the idea of just having a go, no matter mm. whether your book or your idea, or your product has been done before. It hasn't been done by you. Right. And I think this empowerment message is again, coming through from Darren Hardy there, which is, you know, saying you can only control certain things. So why not work hard on those things you can control? Because you can then hopefully influence or at least direct the successes or the uh, striving for the goals that you are setting yourself. I think, I think that's a pretty empowering message, don't you think? Absolutely. And I mean, totally at home here on the Moonshots podcast, I have to say, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah, it's spot on with the Moonshots <laughs> message. So you well are done, amongst Darren friends, Hardy. Darren Hardy. You are amongst friends. <laughs> so look, we, we, we heard about you know, the science of compounding, putting in that daily work. We, we somehow managed to incorporate microwaves into this discussion. Right? <laughs> what's, what's standing out for you as, as our journey today with Darren Hardy and the compound effect? Look, I think reflecting on the series so far, as well as the practices that you and I have learned and discussed on the show uh, previous, I've got to say the idea of Mr. Mo and the momentum, <laughs> it just stands out to me. It really gets me going. The idea that I can put in the extra fuel to try and break through the atmosphere and then it becomes maybe not easier, but it certainly becomes a little bit less uh, uh, stressful, I suppose, after that, I think is, is, is a great takeaway for me. What about you, Mike? What, what are you, you know, particularly writing down as your mantra following today? Ah, oh, this is so like, I'm so sold on this idea and I try so hard to live by the compound effect, the daily habits. Um, I think perhaps that what he was saying at the end there is an invitation to step into the arena, mm. to expose yourself to risk, uh, to fail along the way. It's just not this um, habitualization of your work practice. It's mm. also making the stakes real, going swinging big, going for something that really matters, leaving a legacy. That for me is so it's incredible. He can squeeze that into the compound effect idea. I mean, <laughs> that is a talent indeed, isn't it? Yeah, it really, really is. I think that's a great bookend and conclusion to our achieving your goal series. Don't you think? It really is, Mark. So I want to thank you for being part of this show and the entire series on setting and achieving your goals. But today, I really want to thank our members and our listeners for joining us too, because as we bookended the series with show 205 and Darren Hardy's work, The Compound Effect, and it started with that classic Moonshots idea, put in the work. Because if you do that, you'll experience that 1% better, that 1 plus 1 equals 3, the beauty of compounding. And we're fighting against the microwave mentality, the instantaneous real-time world in which we live we have to get over that need for gratification in the now and actually pave the way for the tomorrow and along the way we'll meet mr mo and we have to keep that momentum going growing and building and sustaining if we want to break through the barriers and darren hardy called us into the arena he asked us he demanded of us to avoid being in the comfort zone to make the stakes real to swing for the fences and be the best version of ourselves and that's what we certainly love to do here on the Moonshots podcast. Okay, that's a wrap.